Okay, this is unit um, F review uh, part two. Okay, um, I finished that last one pretty fast, so let me tell you that I, what I was going to do is I was going to say that um, we know it's going at two meters per second squared. We know we knew that the tension in Ft two was six newtons, and so um, divided by mass, um, these this has to equal that. So I'm thinking that um, the mass is three kilograms. All right, um, next one. Here is a hollow hoop or a hollow can. Um, it's got a mass M. There's some string wrapped around it and we're gonna just let it unravel and it's gonna descend downward. And um, let's find out its acceleration as this rotates downward and descends kind of like a, a, a yo-yo going moving downward okay so what uh, there's a couple ways you can do this if we want to get the acceleration maybe we'll go a equals f net over m so we know we have an at we have a tension up and we know we have an mg down of the can um, now the cans uh if if i were to just look at the alpha of this thing the net torque on this there's no torque due to mg it's all due to ft so it's going to be ft times r the tension in the string times r all over i now the i of a can is just mr squared from a newton's law perspective though we can say a equals f net over m and f net is going to be mg minus ft all over m okay well um, i don't know alpha or ft but what i'll do is um, i'm going to solve for ft go ahead and pause and try and solve for ft or try and solve for the acceleration now um, i'll see you in a little bit okay so if you solve for ft ft apparently i can get rid of an r and and um let me change let me change this alpha to A over R. So the rate at which this accelerates down is related to alpha, it's A over R. So A, I can get rid of another R. Apparently FT is equal to MA. So now I can bring that over here. So A equals MG minus FT, but FT is MA all over m boom 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 and so um, a equals g minus a so bring that a on the other side 2a is equal to g so therefore the acceleration of this can is gonna it's gonna accelerate down at g over 2. at this point i could get ft ft is you know you can just resubstitute it into there so it looks like it's going to be about half the weight of the can. If I put the A in there, it looks like it's half the weight of the can, mg over 2. Okay, next one. Uh, can, you, can you give me the acceleration of this rod? This rod has an I of one-third ml squared. And it's 30 degrees with the uh, axis. And so um, it, with, the, with the vertical, rather. And it's going to swing down, but right in this position, what is the angular acceleration of the rod? Okay, um, go ahead and pause and try and find it. Okay, the angular acceleration of this rod is um, the net torque all over I. Okay, so to get that, to get that um, net torque, um, I'm going to draw the force of gravity on this thing is this way. So that's the force of gravity. Um, let's say it's m times g. The mass. Of, I forgot to tell you, but the mass of this meter stick is m. Let's say. Okay, so um, you only you only want to use the part of mg that is um, perpendicular to the lever arm. This is the lever arm, or you could go the other way and use only the part of the lever arm that's perpendicular to mg. And I think that's the way I'm going to go. So. I just want that. That's my effective lever arm right there. Well, if this is 30 degrees, 
then uh, this is 30 degrees also. Is that right? 30 and 30, yeah, this is 30 degrees right here. And so uh, the lever arm, this is L over 2 right there. That's L over 2. The length of the stick is L over 2. So um, that means that if this is 30 degrees, this is um, going to be, um, let's see, the sine of 30 degrees equals um, the opposite side. That's this side over the hypotenuse L over 2. So it looks like this side is going to be L over 2 times the sine of 30 degrees. Well the sine of 30 degrees is a half and so if you multiply um, a half times L over 2 you get L over 4. So what is the torque that's caused by this? The torque Alpha equals the net torque, which is going to be um, mg. I'll use all the force, but the effective lever arm is L over 4. All that divided by the I. Now the I is one-third m times L squared. Let's get rid of an m. Let's get rid of one of the L's. And that 3 will come all the way up to the top. And so that's going to be um, 3G over 4L. That's what alpha will be when it's in that position, 3G over 4L. Hey, can you uh, give me the units for all these guys? Go ahead and try and give me the units for all these guys. Torque, moment of inertia, angular velocity, angular momentum angular acceleration and tangential acceleration. Go ahead and pause and see if you can get them. Okay, the unit for torque, you use the equations to get the unit. So the units for torque, uh, since it's R cross F, would be Newton meters. The unit for moment of inertia is, since it's MR squared, it's going to be kilograms meters squared. Angular velocity is in radians per second. Angular momentum is I omega, so that's going to be uh, kilograms meters squared, and omega is in radians per second. Though a lot of times you won't have the radians in there since it's a fictitious unit. So sometimes it's just shown as this. Angular acceleration is radians per second squared. Tangential acceleration, however, is meters per second squared. That's a linear acceleration. All right. Oh, I'm running out of time again. But I'm okay. Uh, let's see. Could you give me the rotational inertia of this system? This is one meter by two meters. We're going to put the axis right through here. Um, one kilogram, two kilograms. 2 kilograms, 1 kilogram. Go ahead and see if you can calculate what the rotational inertia is. We'll see you in a little bit. Okay, the rotational inertia is just, you just do each one of these. You treat them as point masses. So I is going to be, the, the moment of inertia of a point mass is just the mass, 1 kilogram, times the distance it is from the axis squared. So that would be 1, it's a it's distance of 1 meter squared. It's this meter I'm using, not that one, this meter. So 1 meter squared plus 2 kilograms times 1 meter squared plus 2 kilograms, doing this guy, times 1 meter squared plus 1 kilogram times um, 1 meter squared. So that's going to be 1 plus 2 plus 2, that's, that's um, 5, 6. So it's 6 kilograms meter squared. All right, um, I have um, one more part, but I think um, I'll leave that for later. Okay, so I'll, we'll show you that um, another night. Thanks a lot. Bye.